Listening section. In this section of the test, you will have the chance to show how well you understand spoken English. There are four parts to this section, with special directions for each part. Part one. Questions one to four. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear some dialogues and questions. Spoken in English. The dialogues and the questions will be spoken twice. They will not be printed in your test book, so you must listen carefully to understand what the speakers are saying. After you listen to the dialogue and the question about it, read the five possible answers and decide which one would be the best answer. To the question you have heard. Now listen to a sample question. You will hear. How can I help you, Mum? Please buy a kilo of rice, two kilos of sugar, a half kilo of eggs, and a pack of tea. Do you need some chicken nuggets? No, we still have some in the refrigerator. What shouldn't the man buy? A, eggs. B, tea. C, rice. D, sugar. E, nuggets. The best answer to the question, "What shouldn't the man buy?" is nuggets. Therefore, you should answer E. Number one. Hot today, isn't it? Yes, it is. I wish that it would rain and cool off. Me too. This is unusual for March. I don't remember it ever being so hot and dry in March before. According to the conversation, what kind of weather is usual for March? Number one. Hot today, isn't it? Yes, it is. I wish that it would rain and cool off. Me too. This is unusual for March. I don't remember it ever being so hot and dry in March before. According to the conversation, what kind of weather is usual for March? Number two. An oil and gas company is carrying out a science competition to support its effort to provide means of educating the nation's youth. Are all students allowed to take part in the competition? Oh yes, college students from all the country's provinces. What is the topic of the dialogue? Number two. An oil and gas company is carrying out a science competition to support its effort to provide means of educating the nation's youth. Are all students allowed to take part in the competition? Oh yes, college students from all the country's provinces. What is the topic of the dialogue? Number three. I don't know what to order. I could drink everything on the menu. Why don't you try guava juice, orange juice, or iced tea? Guava juice sounds good. I'll take it. I think I'll have a big glass of cola float. What will the woman do?
Number three. I don't know what to order. I could drink everything on the menu. Why don't you try guava juice, orange juice, or iced tea? Guava juice sounds good. I'll take it. I think I'll have a big glass of cola float. What will the woman do? Number four. Who wrote that exciting spy adventure novel, Topaz? That was Leon Uris. Didn't he also write those famous stories about bullfighting in Pamplona, Spain? No, that was Ernest Hemingway. What did Leon Uris do? Number four. Who wrote that exciting spy adventure novel, Topaz? That was Leon Uris. Didn't he also write those famous stories about bullfighting in Pamplona, Spain? No, that was Ernest Hemingway. What did Leon Uris do? Part two. Questions five to seven. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear some incomplete dialogues spoken in English, followed by four responses, also spoken in English. The dialogues and the responses will be spoken twice. They will not be printed in your test book. So you must listen carefully to understand what the speakers are saying. You have to choose the best response to each question. Now listen to a sample question. Do you have any plans for next weekend? I am thinking of going mountain climbing. That's interesting. Can I go with you? Sure. Do you have any suggestions for activities there? What does the woman probably respond? A. Sorry, but I don't know much about that. B. Yes, we could have a barbecue there. C. Yes, I think that mountain is too high. D. Yes, I really love mountain climbing. The best answer to the question, "What does the woman probably respond?" is yes. We could have a barbecue there. Therefore, you should choose answer B. Number five. Whose car is it in front of my house? It's yours, madam. Congratulations. Our company has decided that you won the painting competition, which was held last month. What would the woman reply? A. You'd better not do that. B. The painting competition was really tough. C. Are you sure? I can't believe it. D. The car is very unique. Number five. Whose car is it in front of my house? It's yours, madam. Congratulations! Our company has decided that you won the painting competition, which was held last month. What would the woman reply? A. You'd better not do that. B. The painting competition was really tough. C. Are you sure? I can't believe it. D. The car is very unique. Number six. Hi, Anita. 
We finished our national exams today. We can refresh our minds. How do you feel? What does the girl probably respond? A. I'm very doubtful. B. I'm very stressed. C. I'm very upset. D. I'm very relieved. Number six. Hi, Anita. We finished our national exams today. We can refresh our minds. How do you feel? What does the girl probably respond? A. I'm very doubtful. B. I'm very stressed. C. I'm very upset. D. I'm very relieved. Number seven. I'm so sorry you didn't pass the audition for the new movie. Yeah, the director of the movie thought I was not suitable for the character of being a poor lady. What would the man reply to express encouragement? A. It's all right. The movie is too expensive. B. Are you okay? You must hate the movie. C. Don't worry, you still have many other opportunities. D. It will be the same thing for the next movie. Number seven. I'm so sorry you didn't pass the audition for the new movie. Yeah. The director of the movie thought I was not suitable for the character of being a poor lady. What would the man reply to express encouragement? A. It's all right. The movie is too expensive. B. Are you okay? You must hate the movie. C. Don't worry. You still have many other opportunities. D. It will be the same thing for the next movie. Part three, questions eight to eleven. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear some dialogues or monologues spoken in English. The dialogues or monologues will be spoken twice. They will not be printed in your test book, so you must listen carefully to understand what the speakers are saying. After you listen to the dialogue or monologue, look at the five pictures provided in your test book, and decide which would be the most suitable one for the dialogue or monologue you have heard. Number eight. What is your favourite music, Ben? Western music, but I like popular and classical music. Can you play the guitar? A little bit. I also like to play violin, piano, percussion, and kulatang. Oh, really? That's amazing, Ben. Which instrument are you most interested in? The piano. It's more flexible. That's marvelous. Which picture matches the boy's favorite interest? Number eight. What is your favorite music, Ben? Western music, but I like popular and classical music. Can you play the guitar? A little bit. I also like to play violin. Piano, percussion, and kulatang. Oh, really? That's amazing, Ben. Which instrument are you most interested in? The piano. It's more flexible. That's marvelous. 
Which picture matches the boy's favorite interest? Number nine. I think I have gained weight. I have eaten a lot recently. Why don't you check your weight? I put our scales next to the bathroom. Which picture suits the conversation? Number nine. I think I have gained weight. I have eaten a lot recently. Why don't you check your weight? I put our scales next to the bathroom. Which picture suits the conversation? Number ten. Termites are a group of eusocial insects. They are commonly known, especially in Australia. As white ants, they divide labour among castes, producing overlapping generations, and collectively taking care of the young. They live in colonies. People consider termites as pests that can cause serious structural damage to buildings, crops, or forest plantations. Which picture suits the monologue? Number ten. Termites are a group of eusocial insects. They are commonly known, especially in Australia, as white ants. They divide labour among castes, producing overlapping generations, and collectively taking care of the young. They live in colonies. People consider termites as pests that can cause serious structural damage to buildings, crops. Or forest plantations. Which picture suits the monologue? Number eleven. A car is a means of transportation. Almost everybody goes to work by car. Therefore, a car is very crucial. It needs to be serviced by the owner regularly. Besides servicing the engine, the owner should pay attention to all the tyres. Inside a car, there should be important tools such as a scissor lift pick jack for wheel alignment. It's very important to change the tyre when it's flat. A car doesn't need to have a nitrogen generator, a tyre compressor, a tyre changer. And a digital tire inflator, but the owner should check all tires regularly before driving. Which picture is the most suitable for the story? Number eleven. A car is a means of transportation. Almost everybody goes to work by car. Therefore, a car is very crucial. It needs to be serviced by the owner regularly. Besides servicing the engine, the owner should pay attention to all the tires. Inside a car, there should be important tools such as a scissor lift pick jack for wheel alignment. It's very important to change the tire when it's flat. A car doesn't need to have a nitrogen generator, a tire compressor. A tire changer and a digital tire inflator, but the owner should check all tires regularly before driving. Which picture is the most suitable for the story? Part four, questions twelve to fifteen. Directions. In this part of the test, you will hear several monologues. Each monologue will be spoken twice. They will not be printed in your test book, so you must listen carefully to understand what the speakers are saying. After you hear the monologue, 
and the question about it. Read the five possible answers and decide which one would be the best answer to the question you have heard. Questions 12 and 13 are based on the following monologue. Angkor Wat was first a Hindu temple and then a Buddhist temple complex in Cambodia. It is the largest religious monument in the world. The temple was built by the Khmer King Suryavarman II in the early 12th century in Yasodhara Pura, the capital of the Khmer Empire, as his temple and eventual mausoleum. It is dedicated to Vishnu. It is designed to represent Mount Meru, home of the divas in Hindu mythology within a moat and has an outer wall which is 3.6 kilometres long. It has three rectangular galleries, each raised above the next. At the centre of the temple stands quincunks of towers. Number 12. What is the monologue about? Number 13. In the 12th century, which empire was strong enough to build the biggest temple of the world? Questions 12 and 13 are based on the following monologue. Angkor Wat was first a Hindu temple and then a Buddhist temple complex in Cambodia. It is the largest religious monument in the world. The temple was built by the Khmer King Suryavarman II in the early 12th century in Yasodhara Pura, the capital of the Khmer Empire, as his temple and eventual mausoleum. It is dedicated to Vishnu. It is designed to represent Mount Meru, home of the divas in Hindu mythology within a moat and has an outer wall which is 3.6 kilometres long. It has three rectangular galleries, each raised above the next. At the centre of the temple stands quincunks of towers. Number 12. What is the monologue about? Number 13. In the 12th century, which empire was strong enough to build the biggest temple of the world? Questions 14 and 15 are based on the following monologue. Once upon a time, a mouse who had always lived on the land had by an unlucky chance formed an intimate acquaintance with a frog who lived for the most part in the water. One day, the frog was intent on making mischief. He tied the foot of the mouse tightly to his own. Once joined together, the frog led his friend, the mouse, to the meadow where they usually searched for food. He gradually led the mouse toward the pond in which he lived, and when reaching the bank of the water, he suddenly jumped in, dragging the mouse in with him. The frog really enjoyed the water and swam croaking about, ignoring the poor dead mouse's body floating about on the surface. A hawk observed the floating mouse from the sky and dove down and grabbed it with his talons, carrying it back to his nest. The frog, still being fastened to the leg of the mouse, was also carried off as a prisoner and was eaten by the hawk. Number 14 Who lived in the pond? Number 15. How did the hawk catch the mouse? Questions 14 and 15 
are based on the following monologue. Once upon a time, a mouse who had always lived on the land had, by an unlucky chance, formed an intimate acquaintance with a frog, who lived for the most part in the water. One day, the frog was intent on making mischief. He tied the foot of the mouse tightly to his own. Once joined together, the frog led his friend, the mouse, to the meadow where they usually searched for food. He gradually led the mouse toward the pond in which he lived, and when reaching the bank of the water, he suddenly jumped in, dragging the mouse in with him. The frog really enjoyed the water and swam croaking about, ignoring the poor dead mouse's body floating about on the surface. A hawk observed the floating mouse from the sky and dove down and grabbed it with his talons, carrying it back to his nest. The frog, still being fastened to the leg of the mouse, was also carried off as a prisoner and was eaten by the hawk. Number 14. Who lived in the pond? Number 15. How did the hawk catch the mouse? 